Germany produced almost 50,000 tanks in World War II. Now this number can be quite misleading, let me show you why. If we take a look at the production timeline, we can clearly see that the number of tanks produced each year steadily in increases until 1944 where it hits the peak. Now this is very astonishing because the complexity of tanks increased every year. And furthermore, in 1944, another number peaked and that was the amount of bombs dropped on Germany. And in 1944, also Germany was fighting on all fronts and losing on all fronts. So how it is it possible that the peak was in 1944 with all these factors? To answer that question, we need to take a look at the beginning of German tank production. German tank production began in 1934. Now the contracts were mostly assigned along party lines. So most companies that had experience in mass production and efficiency didn't get any contracts. So in pre-war, all tanks were produced with craftsmen. So even in 1939, most tanks were still produced in a craftsman way. Furthermore, a lot of civilian vehicles were still produced by those same companies. Finally, in early 1942, there was a focus on increasing the efficiency and also the mass production capabilities, which is clearly reflected in the increasing numbers for 1943 and the peak in 1944. These optimizations are not only reflected in the numbers of tanks produced, but also in the unit cost of each individual tank. Now these numbers should be taken with a grain of salt. There are very few numbers out there and those numbers that are out there sometimes can't be attributed to a certain point of time. For instance, there are numbers about the early production Tigers, which ranged around 600,000 Reichsmark, whereas right here the number is 250,000 Reichsmark. But considering the low amount of Tiger tanks produced and the high amount of Panthers produced, the relation of these numbers is probably correct. You can clearly see that the difference in production cost between a Panzer III and a Panzer IV is minimal. And the same goes between a Panzer IV and a Panther, whereas the Tiger is way more expensive. Now the Panther was designed by the same company that designed the Panzer III, whereas the Tiger was designed by Henschel. Now Henschel had experience in producing tanks, but not in designing them. So the Tiger was the first tank designed by Henschel. That's probably one of the reasons why it's not so fit for mass production. Basically, the Panther was the most cost-effective tank in the German arsenal. The relatively low cost of the Panther can be attributed to several factors. The first fact was the amount of experience in tank production in general. The second one was, of course, the focus on, on efficiency and optimization. And the last one, in the final years of the war, a lot of slave labor was used in producing tanks and other war equipment. Now, this is also very important to note that this had also a lot of drawbacks because there was a lot of sabotage going on and especially the Panther tanks had a lot of reliability problems, which can be to a certain degree attributed to sabotage. Considering the increase in production efficiency and price per unit, let's take a look at the production numbers for each type of tank in the German arsenal. Note that these numbers are for all tanks and all their various variants like the assault guns, tank destroyers and self-propelled artillery. For the light tanks, the Panzer 1 and Panzer 2, the numbers are pretty low, but that's what we would expect. What seems a bit odd here is the high number of Panzer 38T because it was obsolete in 1940 especially in 1941. Even more surprising seems the very high number of Panzer Freeze because this tank was also obsolete in 1941. Whereas the number of the Panzer IV is high, but not the highest. And generally the Panzer IV was considered the workers of the German Panzerwaffe. Now the number of Panthers is almost a half of that of the Panzer IVs and is higher than one would probably assume, whereas the number of Tigers and King Tigers is very low. So let's take a closer look at the Panzer 38T and the Panzer III here. There were only about 1,400 Panzer 38T produced by Germany, 
but about 3000 Jagdpanzer 38T, better known as the Hetzer. All other numbers are self-propelled artillery, self-propelled anti-aircraft. Now for the Panzer III, only about 5,000 of these 15,000 tanks were Panzer III's, whereas about 10,000 of those were the assault gun version, the Sturmgeschütz III. And I hope these examples demonstrated you that you have to take a closer look at most numbers because they can be quite misleading without the context. And the same goes with the German Panzerwaffe. If we only take a look at the armor thickness, the range and the penetration values of the guns, it is only a very small part of the picture. We have to take a look at the whole picture. Which brings me to the final point. German tank design and German doctrine in World War II was highly effective. But the lack of industrial efficiency and the reluctance to totally mobilize the German arms industry early on eroded over time all those advantages the German army had in the field. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and see you next time.